Hey everybody, how you doing? Teching and Barry here, back again, and I gotta be honest with you, today's intro, it's not gonna be a funny one. Or at least my attempt at being funny. Or my attempt at my attempt at being funny. Whatever you wanna call it, no. This intro is gonna be knowledgeable, that's right, I'm gonna teach you something! Provided you don't already know this fact, and I also probably have mentioned it before because I've made a lot of videos and I've talked about this character before in this, uh, interesting historical fact. But it's something I find very, very fascinating, and yesterday during the review would have been the perfect time to bring it up and I forgot, so I'll bring it up now. Okay. So yesterday was the chapter 998 review and uh, we got to find out all the different, oh by the way, spoilers in case you haven't seen it uh, and you still ended up here somehow. Also chapter 1000, it's coming up. You got less than a month, January 4th. So if you're going to get caught up on One Piece, time's ticking. You got to get it through. Okay. So anyway, chapter 998, we find out the reveal of all of the Toby Ropo's ancient zones. Some are dinosaurs and some are other kind of ancient creatures like a giant spider from the Triassic period or a saber-toothed cat right? And so, during the review, I was trying to organize um, all of the ancient zones from, you know, the most ancient to the least ancient, I guess. Um, and I think I got it correct when I said that uh, Black Maria's ancient zone, the Rosa Megalia, which is this giant ancient tarantula to all Megalomorph spiders, like an ancestor to all of them, uh, that was the most ancient, because uh, Rosa Megalia existed during the Triassic period, okay? So, long before we had giant spinosaurs and allosaurs and triceratops and T-Rexes stomp around, which was primarily Jurassic and Cretaceous period. Uh, even before all of that, we had Rosa Megalia, which is a very large spider. I think it was like around the size of a dog, like a large dog. So just, that's terrifying. Glad that they're not around anymore. Also, that spider was uh, basically the progenitor to a lot of like trapdoor spiders that like, instead of going out and actively hunting, they like lure their, um, their prey to them and then jump out and like, you know, you know, spin the web and whatever. So that also adheres to how Black Maria like, you know, caught Sanji basically with the web, okay? So that was the most ancient one, but I made a mistake when I said the least ancient was the saber tooth cat. When you're talking about the Toby Ropo, that is true, but I forgot that uh, Jack can turn into a mammoth. And mammoths, here's the historical fact that I love, and I've probably mentioned before, but you know how long ago mammoths existed on the planet? You might think, like, tens of thousands of years ago or something, right? Like the woolly mammoths walking across the plains or whatever. No. Woolly mammoths existed on this planet 4,000 years ago. That's right around the time they went extinct. So around 2000 BC. This is insane, because this is like other cultures, like the Egyptians were doing stuff back then, and freaking, uh, like, the Stonehenge was being made when this was going on. Uh, there's an island north of Russia. It's still there. It's called Wrangel Island, and this was the last bastion for the woolly mammoths mammoth race uh, about 4,000 years ago, which is just really recent compared to all these other, like, ancient zones we're talking about, right? And the saber-toothed cat that Who's Who transforms into uh, went extinct around 10,000 years ago, okay? So I, I, you know, wanted to make that uh, correction and also just bring up that historical fact because I love stuff like that. I love when I find out that things that we think are so ancient are really not that ancient, right? So that was just something there. Now, in today's video, we're going to be talking about Who's Who. Who are we talking about? Who's who? Who are we talking about? Who's who? Okay, just... I, I was waiting for it. I was waiting for the day when we were gonna have to do this, Barry, right? I was waiting for the moment when Who's Who was gonna get into a fight with somebody, and we're gonna have to do a whole video talking about Who's Who, and it's it's just gonna get confusing, alright? So just bear with me. Jinbei's fighting against Who's Who, fourth level of the tower, the Cat Cafe. Jinbei was with Luffy, and he's like, man, this is a catastrophe, Luffy. We're being surrounded by a bunch of cat people. They're really strong. So Jinbei kind of opens up a, a way for Luffy to escape to get up to the fifth level. We don't know what's up with him, but apparently he's on a solo mission right now. Jinbei stayed down below, and he's just beating the crap out of a bunch of these cat people that are attacking him until he eventually runs into, like, this giant cat bed, and you have Who's Who in his full saber-toothed tiger form sitting there lording over Jinbei with all these other cat minions around him just kind of licking his paws like, hmm... Jinbei, first son of the sea, warlord, could you please stop beating the crap out of all of my subordinates? It's very rude. And Jinbei's like, do I know you? And, you know, Who's Who is like, oh, well, actually, no, here's what actually happens. Okay, so Jinbei actually tells him, don't call me a warlord or don't call me by, like, first son of the sea or whatever. Jinbei has a lot of different titles, if you've noticed. Uh, he's been around for a while. He's 46 years old. He's accomplished quite a bit in his life. So you got, like, first son of the sea, royal warlord or Shishibukai. I think knight of the sea is also used a lot for him. So a lot of times I'll confuse it. Now, like, the first knight of the sea, Jinbei, royal warlord or whatever. But anyway, no. 
no, Gene Bay's like, don't call me any of that stuff. Call me by the title that I, I, I hold in the most regard, like the most like honorable title I have. I am the helmsman of the Straw Hat crew, damn it. Tenth member. It was a long time coming, several years, but you will address me as a damn straw hat now, right? All right, so who's who? And he responds with that like, um, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I, I just, uh, last time I saw you, you were a warlord. So that's just how I remember you as. And Jean Bay was like, huh? And everybody was reading that like, wait, what? Who? Who are you, who's who? And it's like, it's like a Scooby-Doo joke or whatever. But anyway, you know, Jean Bay's like, oh, well, I don't know you. Maybe if I knock off your helmet, I'll be able to see who you are. And, uh, you know, who's who's like, oh, you're not going to get a chance to do that. And then after that, we don't know what happens next. If who's who just jumps off of the cat bed and like tries to maul Jean Bay or the other cats attack him first. Uh, but there's certainly a connection here. All right. I'm, and I'm pretty sure just because Jean Bay doesn't recognize him right now, that doesn't mean he won't recognize him when who's who is in like his human form or his hybrid form. Okay. Because I don't think Jean Bay, I mean, throughout this entire arc, Jinbei has never actually seen who's who in his normal human form with like the jacket, like the blazer and the tattoos and he always carries a sword with the flower hilt around him so maybe if he transforms back into his human form, Jinbei will see him and recognize the tattoos or the sword and be like, oh okay, I remember you now, I remember who you are so that got a lot of people curious, I think even more curious than what's going on with Black Maria or Sasaki because there's a little bit of a past here which also leads up to why Oda decided to, okay, we're going to have Jinbei fight against Who's Who, because apparently before this, there was like no connection to them whatsoever, right? And so Oda's like, no, there is a connection. Keep in mind, like I said, Jinbei's 46 years old, okay? He's been around for quite some time. Even before he was a warlord, he was a famous pirate. He had his own crew. Before that, he was on Fisher Tiger's crew. Before that, he was an ammo knight, one of the royal guard for King Neptune in the Ryugu Kingdom in Fishman Island. So he's always had like... Like, he, he has a long and storied history. People know about him, right? And so what I think Oda's really going for here is trying to, like, reaffirm that to us. Like, Jinbei, you know, he's he's been around the block more than once, all right? There's probably a lot of people he's fought against, maybe a lot of people that have vendettas against him, or a lot of people that respect him. You know, he, he has a lot of stuff going on here. Now, what Who's Who did mention, though, he specifically mentioned Jinbei during his time as a warlord. That's when Who's Who met him the first time, all right? And it might have been a thing where Who's Who didn't, like, directly clash with Jinbei, and Jinbei's just not remembering it right now. I'm sure as a warlord, there's probably a lot of people that try to battle you. Remember Ace? Ace, Ace was the same thing. We're gonna be getting back to Ace here in a second. Just bear with me here. There's something involving that. Um, but, you know, as a warlord, there's probably a lot of people that, like, you know, ride up to you and be like, oh, hey, you're Jinbei, first son of the sea. You're really strong. Fight me to see if I'm really strong, right? So it could have been something like that, and it's just Jinbei's fought against so many people, he just doesn't remember. Or it could have been a thing where Who's Who maybe witnessed Jinbei doing something, witnessed him fighting. Maybe Who's Who was present at Marine Ford and got to see Jinbei fighting there. Um, I don't know about that, though, because the thing is, Jinbei resigned from being a warlord at Marine Ford, right? So, I don't know. It might have been a little weird if Who's Who met him there. Um, there's another theory regarding that. We'll get to that in a moment. There's, there's a few going on here. Um, but it would just been a little weird if Who's Who was like, Oh, yes, I remember you from your time as a warlord. And then you resigned five minutes later, if that, that's when they first met at Marineford, okay? So Jinbei became a warlord when he was 35 years old. And he stayed a warlord for nine years until he was 44 at Marineford when he resigned to Sengoku. Okay, he's like, you threw me in jail because I didn't want to fight in a war. Screw you guys, I'm out, okay? So we're looking at that nine-year period. And unfortunately, um, unlike his time when he was a member of Fisher Tiger's crew or he was an ammo knight, we don't really know a lot of stuff that Jinbei did during that particular nine-year period. We understand he spent a lot of time on Fishman Island, but he also probably spent a lot of time just traveling around because that's where he met Ace and him and Ace fought for, I think it was like a week or like 10 days or something. And they ended in a draw and they both collapsed and that's when Whitebeard showed up. So I'm sure Jinbei did a lot of traveling and stuff, went home every now and then to say hi to everybody um, and fought a lot of people. So I just assume that's probably who's, who's, who, who, damn it. <laughs> this is staying in. This is staying in, Barry, on who's, who's who is, you know, it's just like some random person that challenged him. That could have been an option, but we got a lot of other things on the table here. So I'm looking through the comments and I'm looking through people saying, you know, who's he going to be? And it, a lot of people seem to be like, how about Mast Deuce? Not Ace, not Isuka. Here we go. Mast Deuce right there. Okay. So Mast Deuce has a mask. 
Who's who's got a mask? Makes sense to me. Let's roll with it. All right. So that would have been really cool. I got to admit, when I first read that, I, I immediately was like, oh, that would be so damn cool. Just because I would love to see Mass Deuce introduced in the canon of the manga. Also, we're getting, I think because we got that set up at the end of the chapter that Yamato was going to go into the past involving Ace and Ace's journey into Wano and what he did there and everything like that. Apparently, we're gearing up for an Ace flashback. Maybe it'll be the flashback that'll last $9.99 and $1,000. Who knows? But I think it was because of that Ace flashback and because Who's Who mentioned to Jinbei, oh, I've met you before when you were a warlord, and Jinbei fought against Ace, and so Mass Deuce would have definitely been present during the battle between Jinbei and Ace, not, like, directly fighting Jinbei, but witnessing his power, I think that's what a lot of people started to click together. Okay. So, few things why this does make sense, and a few things on why it doesn't make sense, all right? That's what I'm here to do. Right, Barry? Okay. So... He has a mask. Who's who wears a mask? That's something, right? Okay. Also, uh, after Ace died, we don't really know. I haven't read. I have the other Ace Light novel up there, but I haven't read it yet. So forgive my ignorance on this subject if there's something that mentions Mass Deuce or what he does there. Because I'm pretty sure the second Ace Light novel, I don't think it goes all the way up to like Ace being killed by Akainu. I think it ends off with him meeting Whitebeard, I, I think. So if there's something else involving Deuce in there that I'm missing, let me know, okay? If there's something that contradicts here, okay? Um, but I'm going to assume that when Ace joined up with Whitebeard's crew, Ace's spade crew also joined up. Now, the problem with that is we didn't really get to see them at Marineford, or if they were there, Oda didn't really focus on them very much. And what happened after Ace died, what happened to the rest of, you know, the Whitebeard crew disbanded, so I'm assuming the Spade crew that was part of the Whitebeard crew also disbanded. So what happened to Deuce? At the very least, I don't think we really know much about what happened to Deuce in the last two years. Even if that's what happened, like he was at Marineford, they did try to get Ace back, but they failed, he died, Whitebeard's crew disbanded, then the Spade crew just went their separate ways, and then Deuce was just gone, all right? So he's mysterious, we don't know where he's at, and maybe at some point he joined up with the Toby Ropo and, you know, got stronger and joined up with Kaido's crew, and then maybe that's what he was referring to when he met Jinbei, okay? So if, if the, it depends on the second novel that I haven't read. It depends on that kind of stuff. Like, maybe there was something that mentioned what happened with Deuce and what he's doing right now, okay? I just don't know that, all right? Few things that don't make sense is, number one, in the light novel, at least this first light novel, Deuce was not, like, a swordsman. He was not, like, a fighter in that capacity. He was more of the brains to the operation. Ace was the captain. He was really strong. He had the Logia. Not an idiot, but not, not, not the brightest, not, not the brightest flame in the bunch, you know? That was more for, uh, Deuce to do his thing, you know? He was the one that kind of came up with battle strategies and things like that. He's a novelist. Whenever we see who's who walking around, we see him with a sword. And, I mean, I guess he could have always tried to learn the sword over the last two years or whatever, uh, but, you know, would Kaido accept, you know, would he rise to the ranks of, like, Toby Ropo with, like, oh, yeah, I just started to learn this sword the last few years, you know what I mean? So, that's a little bit, you know, kind of iffy on how that would go there. Um, also, who's who? We do have an official height for him and an official age. Who's who is 3.3 meters tall. He's 11 feet tall, and he's uh, 38 years old. Now, granted, we don't know anything about Mass Deuce. We don't know how tall he is, and we don't know how old he is. I assumed during when he first met Ace, they were about the same age, so that would put Deuce maybe in his like early to mid-20s right now. Uh, not the same age, but he might have been older. Um, it was also never mentioned in the novel, really, that he was super tall, and I'm not saying that as a positive. I'm saying that as, like, if Deuce was intended to be like this super tall character, like 11 feet tall. Because Ace and Luffy and Sabo, they kind of have like normal human heights for like their ages, you know, uh, like early 20s and whatever. Um, if Mass Deuce was like 11 feet tall, I think, I feel like that should have been mentioned in the story. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh yeah, Ace was stranded on this deserted island and then he ran across this guy that was 11 feet tall and they worked together and they helped, you know, they helped each other and they managed to get off the island. They managed to escape, right? So I think for those reasons, those don't really sink up. Uh, the hairstyle is kind of like the least thing, because it's like it's turquoise here, but it's like you could always say, well, maybe Mass Deuce grew out his hair and then dyed it. It's anime, right? So that, that one's the least of our concerns, but it's like Who's Who is clearly very strong, he's a swordsman, and he's super tall, and he's 38 years old, and all of those things, to me, don't really click with Deuce's character here. Um, 
And also, obviously, Deuce didn't have a saber-toothed cat, devil fruit, but you could just say he ate that later, right? Now, something else I want to bring up is that, of course, Oda did not write this light novel. Uh, this was written by Sho Hinata. Hinata? 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 Not sure. But anyway, it was written by um, Sho Hinata. So I'm assuming Oda and Hinata worked together on this, you know, like, you know, maybe emailed back and forth, talked to each other because they're like working on the same kind of universe. And obviously they're using, you know, um, his character Ace, right, of course. So I'm thinking that's how it worked. But I don't know if Oda was the one that designed Deuce. I know there's sketches of Deuce that Oda drew, like right here. Like this, this right here, that's drawn by Oda, right? But I don't know if Oda came up with Deuce and sent the sketch and his character profile and everything over to uh, Sho, and then, you know, they took it and, you know, made the novel. I, I, I feel like Sho created Deuce. I'm feeling that that's a creation there. Also, Boichi uh, did a drawing, did like a whole chapter based on the Ace Light novel, which was really cool that I recommend to go check out there. And also there, um, you know, uh, Deuce is not depicted at being like 11 feet tall or whatever. Um, so I don't know. My point is with that little tangent is I don't know if Oda would incorporate Deuce in that way. Like I'm going to make Deuce into an enemy in the chapters, in my manga, you know, with the Toby Ropo when, uh, you know, he was created by somebody else. I, I don't know if Oda would do that. Maybe, who knows? I guess we'll have to see there. But that's just something I'm just kind of like, just bugged me a little bit. But yeah, I'm feeling like Deuce is not going to be who's who. Okay, so back to the drawing board. Who else do we got? Well, um, I was on Twitter last night and I saw Artor, Artor, Library of O'Hara, links below. He was trying to figure out exactly what's going on with all this. And he threw out an idea. He threw out what about Squardo uh, from, you know, Marine Ford, one of the allies of Whitebeard's crew? What about Squardo? He's got long flowing pink locks, you know, maybe there and already established. We already know who Squardo is. Also, Squardo was a member of like the whirling spider pirates. And it was mentioned that the Toby Ropo were all previous pirate captains in their own right, like Drake was before they became Toby Ropo. So, okay, maybe Squardo. Problem with that is, once again, the information that we've already gotten, unfortunately. Also, Squardo was a swordsman, right? Problem, though, is that Squardo was already revealed to be 52 years old and 228 centimeters tall, so about seven and a half feet. So, once again, like, unless Oda does a retcon here, or Oda comes up with some other explanation on how this goes down, the ages and the heights of these characters do not sync up at all. And so, barring that, I'm unfortunately... I, and I was really disappointed, because when Artur is like, maybe Squardo, I'm like, oh, that would be cool! Former captain, ally of Whitebeard, Jinbei and Whitebeard were friends, so they probably would have met at some point. That explains that. He was at Marineford. You know, we already introduced him. You bring him back into the story. That would be cool. And the hair matches. Um, facial features are a little bit different, though. And the ages and the heights just don't match. So... I gotta say, I really am not fit. Just from the information we've learned already, unless Oda does a retcon or something, um, yeah, I gotta say that I don't really think Squardo is gonna turn out to be who's who. Uh, so if it's not, you know, who's who or Squardo, who else do we got here, right? And and like I said, that's the problem. It's like Jinbei spent nine years as a warlord, and we just don't know the majority of what happened there. I'm thinking maybe Oda might take this as like a clean slate. And he might just be like, I will now fill in a little bit more of the past of Jinbei. You thought Jinbei had a sad backstory. Hold on, where am I? Wait, 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 there you go. You think Jinbei had a sad backstory before? Well, he's a straw hat now. It's got to get sadder, right? So something happened to him when he was a warlord or something. And something went down and like people died or something. And he was like really traumatized by that, right? And maybe who's who was there or something like that it might be you know going with that angle with it right and so Oda's like yeah this is a previously untold story I've never you know revealed any of these characters before anything uh when Jinbei was three years into being a warlord he was 38 years old uh maybe he was traveling around and he got into a fight with somebody and he accidentally destroyed a house and he killed some parents and then who's who was the who's who was there I guess he wouldn't have been a child at that point because who's who is only a little bit younger than Jinbei but maybe he would have wrecked somebody's town or something by accident. I, I don't know. I'm just throwing something out there because I feel like, you know, Oda, now that Jinbei is an official member, Oda has to give us a little bit more of its back, of his backstory. Just, just a little bit more, maybe, stuff that we didn't know about previously, right? And I think that's where Who's Who is going to fall into. Um, I was also thinking about maybe other warlords. 
uh, who's who might be connected to another warlord that might have met Jinbei. Uh, Jinbei, when he was fighting against Gecko Moria at the war, knew enough about Moria to know the weaknesses of the zombies. He's like, oh, he's fighting against the zombies. He's like, oh yes, if I recall, the weakness to these zombies is salt. And so he used his water, he used the Fishman Karate to summon the water and use the salt in the ocean water to, um, you know, purify the zombies. Now, just because they were both warlords doesn't mean they all get together and share all of their abilities. That's not really what the warlords are about. It wasn't like they all get together and like, okay, everybody, like Sengoku's at the head of the table, all the warlords are there, like Crocodile, Moria, Hancock, Mihawk, Jinbei. It's like, okay, everybody, now I want everybody to go around the table and tell everybody what your special ability is, if you have any devil fruits, what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, so we're all on the same page here. It's like, uh, yeah, I'm Crocodile. Uh, I'm totally not the leader of a secret criminal organization called Baroque Works, and my alias is definitely not Mr. Zero. I control the power of the, uh, the Suna Suna no me. It's pretty badass, Logia. Uh, I could be defeated by a super soaker. Okay, next. You know, you know Gecko Moria is like, yeah, well, you see, I was traumatized when Kaido beat the crap out of my crew, but I stole a sword and an ancient samurai zombie from Wano. Yes, I control zombies, and they're uh, supremely powerful, unless you take some table salt and sprinkle it in their mouths. That defeats them immediately, you know? And so, uh, that's probably not what happened. So I like that the, maybe Jinbei and Moria, they had an encounter at one point. They fought at some point. Or maybe Jinbei witnessed uh, Moria fight. And so if that's the case, maybe Who's Who, you know, you know, rode around with Moria. Maybe Who's Who was a member of Moria's previous crew, and they were at Wano. And, you know, Moria thought they all got wiped out by Kaido. But one of them survived. Who's Who defected from Moria. is like, well, Moria almost got me killed. I'm just going to stay here in Wano with the freaking giant dragon guy. And, uh... Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hang out here. That would have been over 20 years ago, which would have put who's who around 18 years old. He would have been a teenager, probably. Not completely ridiculous that he would have been on like Moria's original crew or something, and he would have been in Wano already. And then after all that was over, he stayed and he joined Kaido's crew, and he wasn't to Toby Ropa right away. It took some time. He had to rise through the ranks, sort of. Um, but maybe during his time, if he was part of Moria's original crew before they got to Wano, uh, maybe when he was an apprentice pirate, they encountered. Um, Jinbei and he saw how he would fight and then you know 20 years later here the only problem with that is that uh who's who was I think mentioned to be a pirate captain beforehand so that's a problem there but it, it could be somebody related to the other warlords uh or really just Moria because I don't think Jinbei really ever talked about any of the other warlords or having a relationship with any of the other ones or knowing a lot about the other warlords like Jinbei is like oh yes me and Doflamingo used to go out for drinks every other Thursday and me and Hancock would play chess every Sunday you know, it was nothing like that. The warlords weren't very close. So I think it, it had to be some sort of fight that Moria had with Jinbei at some point there. But maybe who's who was or was not involved. I'm not really sure there. Um, maybe not necessarily Squardo, but because Jinbei was uh, not an... Well, he was an ally with Whitebeard, but not in that way. He was more of just like a friend of Whitebeard. He was indebted to Whitebeard for what Whitebeard did to protect Fishman Island. So maybe uh, one of the other proper allies, like the pirate pirate captain allies like Squardo, but not not him specifically, but maybe someone else. Because we did a whole list. I did a whole video about this time last year. I went down this whole freaking list talking about all of the different ally captains that Oda, uh, he didn't like show every single one, but he like sketched out every single one, like much like uh, Big Mom's family. And so maybe it was one of them. Maybe one of those characters was turns out to be who's who. In fact, actually, you know what? Give me a second. I'm going to go through and look through all of those different characters really quick. I should have done this before the video. I'm going to look through those characters really quick to see if any of them, like, immediately spring to mind, like, that was who's who the whole time. Hold on a second. Okay, so at my first glance, just going back and looking through all those sketches and the uh, art from the anime and stuff, uh, I don't see anybody that really immediately jumps out at me as who's who. There was a character that did have horns coming out of his head named Rush that we only see in a very brief panel, but doesn't really resemble who's who, okay? And he was like more of a bullhorn rather than, you know, like the dragon horns or the dinosaur or whatever, you know, uh, the, the motive there for who's who is. So, yeah, maybe not, but maybe somebody that was allied with Whitebeard or something like that or knew Whitebeard, right? But honestly, I think... From what we know right now, unless some other big information comes out, somebody like, you know, digs it up like, holy crap, it was this character the whole time that we only got to see in those two chapters like seven years ago and nobody really remembered. This is who's who. 
unless something like that happens, honestly, right now, I'm going to hedge my bets that it was someone that we've never met before. I, I'm thinking it was somebody that, um, you know, that's going to be a whole new story, clean slate that Oda is going to tell. All right. So I think that's what we're going to go with here. So the answer to the question of who is who's who, we still don't know who, who, who's, who, who's, 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 we still don't know who's who. So we don't know who this dude is. We don't know who this dude is, man. He's just, he's a dude. He's just a dude that can turn into a giant cat. That's all you need to know right now, okay? Well, anyway, um, thanks for watching, everybody. And let me know down below uh, who do you think this dude is and any connections to any other characters or anything like that that might tie back to Jinbei, which would then tangentially tie back to who's who. Um, I'm sure we're going to have a scene where he either transforms back into a human and he's got the tattoos and the sword and then Jinbei might recognize him or maybe Jinbei will knock off his helmet and you'll see like a scar on his head or something like that scene in Naruto where, you know, Jiraiya couldn't remember the guy that was pain, pain, and then knocked off the headband and saw the scars. Like, I know who you are now. It, it might be something along those lines. Like, you know, maybe there's a guy that Jinbei punched so hard in the face he left a scar like maybe used a jet of water and caused a scar and then that's what was underneath the cap and then Jinbei's like I remember you now it was seven years ago you know something like that in some random island in the west blue you know and then we get a little bit of a backstory there but for right now yeah I don't think it's Deuce I don't think it's Squardo we're just gonna have to wait and see thanks for watching everybody this will be Teching and Barry signing out